Hello, and welcome to episode 8 of Chemistry in 50 Minutes or Less. My name is Audra, and this review lesson is on chapters 6 and 7, part 1, Chemical Bonding. Some basic rules of nature to understand why bonding happens are going to come first. The first thing to understand is that things will fall to the lowest energy level. This means that everything favors a structure that will minimize potential energy. The other thing is that compounds, then, tend to have lower energy than free elements. There are a couple of exceptions, things like noble gases, oxygen, nitrogen, sulfur, and other things of that nature. But the general rule is compounds have lower energy. So then, let's define chemical bonding. Chemical bonding is a mutual attraction between nuclei and valence electrons of different atoms that bind them together. That means you have atom 1 and atom 2. I know I'm drawing the planetary model, but it's easier to see. This nucleus is attracted to these electrons, and this nucleus is attracted to these electrons. Now, because they're both attracted to each other, that'll start to pull them closer and closer together. Now, as far as chemical bonding goes, there are two types. Ionic bonding and covalent bonding. Now, ionic bonding is chemical bonding that results from electrical attraction between cations and anions, which means opposites. So these two will attract because this one has a negative charge and this one has a positive charge. Remember again, the positive ion is called a cation, the negative ion is called an anion, and the charges are balanced, because all ionic compounds must be electrically neutral. This is something called electroneutrality, but we'll talk about balancing charges in a second. On the other hand, covalent bonding is chemical bonding that results from the sharing of electron pairs between two atoms. So that's going to look more like you have your nucleus here, you have your nucleus here, and there are some little electrons in here, and they're shared between the two. Both of them have it as part of their shell. In this case, this would look like hydrogen, but we'll get back to that in a second. Now, you can tell bond character from something called electroneutrality difference, which is exactly what it sounds like. Basically, you can use this chart to tell what type of bond it is. If it's down here, it's nonpolar covalent. We'll put values in in a second. These are all polar covalent. And bonds up here are ionic. As far as values go, this would be about 0, 0 0.3, 1.7. These all are your electroneutrality difference, but let's talk about what these types of bonding mean. We already talked about ionic bonding, but a rule of thumb is this is generally always bonding between a metal and a non-metal, because they're so far apart on the table, their difference is likely going to be greater than 1.7. Now, polar covalent is where bonding electrons are not shared equally. There's an unequal charge distribution. To help visualize this, let's look at an example. Oxygen. You have your oxygen atom bonded to two hydrogens. Now, oxygen has a value of 3.5, and hydrogen both has a value of 2.1. That means the difference between these electroneutralities is about 1.3. Because of that, you can see we fall into the polar covalent category. And as you can also see, because of the difference in electroneutrality and as well as atomic size, oxygen is here in the middle much bigger than these two. This means the bond is not shared very equally between them, which is what it means by unequal charge distribution. Now, for nonpolar covalent, that is where bonding electrons are shared equally. There is an equal charge distribution. So let's take an example like bromine and iodine. Now, bromine has a value of 2.8, and iodine has a value of 2.5, which means their difference is about... 0.3, which does put them on this line, but they probably will be nonpolar covalent because there's, it's hard to get a difference that small. But these two, when they bond, I'm going to draw the blue dot structure, which we'll talk about in a second, or a different video. 
they both have the full shell, they're sharing it, and the charge is equal between these two. I know this doesn't probably show it as well, but... So you can use this chart up here to help you figure out what type of bonding it is. And we are going to briefly talk about metallic bonding. We did, we did talk about this in a later chapter, but we might as well just go ahead and get this out of the way. Now it makes sense. Metallic bonding is where you have metals all together, and the valence electrons in these become sort of delocalized, and just sort of cover them in a sea of electrons, so to speak. They all tend to share them pretty equally. Now these bonds are generally very, very, very weak, which is why metals break so easily, but if you're thinking about metallic bonding, this is about what it would look like. Now we need to spend some time talking about chemical formulas. Now a chemical formula is a combination of chemical symbols and numbers to represent a substance. That's a complicated way of saying something like this, which might look familiar like we talked about. This is stuff like H2O and everything you write like this with subscripts to tell you how many of these are visible. Now what these actually tell you is which elements are present. As you can see, we have hydrogen and oxygen. Ratio of atoms per element, as you can tell, two hydrogens, one oxygen. Number of atoms per formula unit, three. All atoms are bonded in the same way, but it does not tell you the total number of atoms present. It's pretty simple, we just have to go over the definition while we're in this chapter. And the final thing to talk about are some definitions that you might not need, but we talked about anyway. Electrolyte and non-electrolyte. An electrolyte is a substance that, when dissolved in the solvent, increases conductivity. And a non-electrolyte is a substance that, when dissolved in a solvent, does not increase conductivity. And with that, that should conclude episode 8 of Chemistry in 15 Minutes or Less. Feel free to leave questions or suggestions in the comments below, and be sure to follow the in-video links, check out the playlist, or head over to my channel for more videos on Chemistry Review. As always, I hope this was helpful, and have a great day.